Good. Okay. Now we're going to get started with head coach Bilal. Evening, evening, guys. Uh, obviously, losing at home is not something that uh, <clears throat> we've done in a long time. So uh, it, it hurts. It hurts a lot, particularly after the Orlando game. That hurts. So we're, uh, we've suffered the last two games. Uh, we, I thought we lost the game in the first 20 minutes when we just started so sluggishly. Slow, second to every ball, uh, careless passes away, give too many free kicks away, give too many uh, corner kicks away. And it just invited, uh, and I suppose the, the penalty kick was just just uh, probably t typified the sloppiness in our play in the first 20 minutes. And then in the last 20 minutes of the first half, we created chances. We played more like ourselves, probably should have scored uh, at least one, maybe two, maybe uh, maybe could have had a penalty, but we were never going to get anything uh, from this referee. Uh, I didn't actually think it was a penalty. Did does anyone else? Did anyone else think it was a penalty? No, no. I mean, so uh, and then and then they were really game savvy. You know, I, I think that Jim's obviously a great coach. They've got good players, and the game savvy going down. Uh, wasted, not wasting time, but just game management uh, s kept slowing us down, and uh, you know we made a poor mistake for the second goal, lack of concentration, and it left us a lot to do against this team. And it was always going to be something really special, and Gonzalo produced that. Uh, and then it just, I just felt we had a lot of players that were just making wrong decisions, shooting from outside the box, shooting from 30, 40 yards instead of taking the extra pass, crossing when we should have passed it. And I thought we just played with a few, f a few tired minds. And and when you're tired, you make, you make decisions that are not uh, the right decisions. So, uh, what I've said to him is, is that the home form has been really good. It's our, it's been our X factor, and we and we've got to make sure that we bounce back and respond really quickly for Saturday. There's no time in the next two days to be tired. Uh, there's no time to mope around and sulk and feel sorry for ourselves and have a pity party. We've we've got to respond against Charlotte and. Uh, you know, we've got to respond against Charlotte, we've got to respond against Barcelona, and then we've got, we've got to respond against uh, NYC a week on Saturday. So the games are coming thick and fast. When you're a professional footballer, there's no, there's no better way, there's no better, there's no better way in the world is that when you've suffered defeat or you're disappointed is to get straight back on the horse straight away. And that's what we do on Saturday. And uh, we go again. We're gonna get started with questions. First, Chris Whittingham of Inter Miami Broadcast, then Michelle Kaufman, then Austin. Go ahead, Chris. Chris, you're on mute. Go ahead. All right, we're Chris, we're you're on mute. We're gonna go. To, we're gonna go to Michelle and then Austin. Um, Alejandro Pozuelo was announced. Uh, was introduced at halftime. Um, do you expect that he might be able to play on Saturday? What's his status? We're in, we're in the hands of the. Uh, in the hands of the visa visa process, we're hoping it, it's 50-50 at this moment in time. We're hoping uh, he, he's 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 not trained for 10 days, so uh, just on his own really. So we've got to uh, we've got to hope that it, it, his visa comes through, his passport comes back, and uh, I think I think it'll be if he is if he is available, which should be great. It's just in uh, the the lift I think the squad need at this moment in time. You, you you look at you look at the squad at the end of the game. I think I think we need we need a little bit of a lift and uh, and Poswello can come in and, and provide us with some real quality and competition for place uh, more importantly. Next question, Austin, then Felipe Cardenas. You talked a little bit about the first half and coming out a little sluggish, but I wanted to talk about the attack. Uh, it seemed like there was a little bit of an imbalance in terms of more attacks coming from the right side, especially threatening ones. Was that something that you planned on to attack the r on from the right side, or did you want to see more of a balance on both sides and attack? Yeah, I, I wanted to see. I wanted to see balance. We knew that with DeAndre and Robert that we would get really good play down the down the right hand side. I think. I think what we said to Emerson, who I thought did did uh, who did okay in the first half, is that he was playing too narrow. We wanted him to be on the touchline and receive it wide and stretch the back back four. And I felt as if he was coming inside too much. So we we we, we tried to create create. Uh, correct that at half time but then the second half we didn't really get the ball out to him uh, we attacked down our right they attacked down their right it was almost like a right sided game really with Imbizo and, and Yedlin uh, and both left sides probably didn't attack as, as, as well as the right uh, we wanted 
we wanted balance. Uh, obviously, with with Lasseter out, uh, you know, and, and Indy played his first 90 minutes on Saturday. We rested him today. Uh, we, uh, we 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 went with speed with Emerson. I thought he did okay. He saw glimpses, and uh, I thought he made some really good decisions. Uh, but we just needed to create more from both sides and have a bit more balance. Next question, Felipe Cardenas. Then we'll try again with Chris and then Michelle. Thank you, Rafa. Phil, a bit of a, br a broad question for you. You started three 21-year-olds up front in Duke, Campan and Rodriguez. Uh, obviously, you're, you're missing some key players in, in Pasuelo, but you have Mabika as well, who started at Fort Lauderdale. You guys are committed to the young pathway. You've talked about it a lot. Chris has talked about it a lot. How satisfied are you with these young players in, in tough matchups like these? And where do players like Romeo and Harvey fit into this pathway to the senior team? Well, I, th I think I think with any young players, if you're good enough, you, you, you're going to get in the team. And uh, I spoke to Bryce Duke the other day. We've, we've obviously signed Oswell Owen. We signed uh, Quarantine John. And and you need to make sure that you give the players the reassurance that if they play well enough, they'll they'll start. That there's no guarantee that Pozuelo will start in every game. There's no there's no guarantee that anyone's a certain starter. You've got to perform. And and I learned a very very big lesson at Manchester United early in my career is that you know every year we bought probably three four world class players or the best players in the league to our to our team. But there's always going to be a pathway to the first team in 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 this football club and. You know, we had Amey and Ryan Saylor, two first-round draft picks. Uh, Leo is young. Bryce Duke's really young, playing in his probably first full season in the MLS. Emerson Rodriguez, his first full season in the MLS. Uh, and and what I would say is is that if you're on the MLS two side or you're a young young player on the MLS, th th there will always be a pathway, but you've got to be better than the person in front of you. And if you are, you'll get opportunities. If you're not, then you don't deserve your opportunity. That is life. Uh, I think I think nowadays in life you get you get you get people wanting things straight away, expecting things and entitlement to things. But but what we tell our young players at this football club is you've got to earn the right to play. We've been telling that to Emerson Rodriguez, who's been who's been really frustrated and frustrated and frustrated. And 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 I keep saying to him, you got to earn the right to play. Nobody's nobody's just going to come and hand you a silver platter on a plate and say here you are. There's the keys to the, uh, the keys to the uh, the castle. You've got to earn that. You've got to earn that through hard work. You've got to earn that through your own performances. And you've got to be better than the person in front of you. And uh, I think that's a really good rule f in, in any walk of life that you should have. Last three questions. We'll do Chris Whittingham, Michelle, and then Ian. Chris? Thank you, Rafa. Uh, I wanted to ask about um, Gonzalo Higuain and his performance tonight off the bench. What did you make of his uh, substitute appearance? Well, I thought he affected the game. I think I think he came on at a time when we thought it was going to be a technical uh, technical type performance, and I thought he affected the game. Uh, he, he hasn't he hadn't trained for a week since Dallas. In playing at Dallas, he, we 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 hadn't seen him till Monday, so we'd had the full week off uh, through a, through a virus, uh, not COVID related, just a, just a simple virus. So. Uh, it, it, it was always going to be difficult to get him beyond the 35-minute mark. So, uh, but he made an impact. He scored a brilliant goal. That's his first goal, I think, since uh, Aust Austin away. Is it? Was it a penalty? Houston, Houston at home. Uh, so that will do him a world of good. And you saw when he scored how much it meant to him. Next question, Michelle. I want to piggyback on that same question on Gonzalo. Um, you know, he's obviously capable when you see that goal that he scored. Um, when you see him do something like that, does it make you think that he can really impact coming up in these next few games? Yeah, I think we, we will need him to impact. I think, you know, the thought of Pozuelo and Gonzalo on the same pitch, I think is quite exciting. Uh, we'll see how he is tomorrow, Gonzalo, see if he recovers from the game today. But, you know, I think, I think when you're out the team or, or you're not playing regularly, the only way you can put yourself back into the team and into the manager's thoughts is by making an impact, scoring goals. And and I think I think this team is crying out for goals, and uh, that's his third of the season now. If we can get Gonzalo up to eight to ten goals from now to the end of the season, then we're going to be close to the playoffs. Last question, Ian. Gonzalo is another substitute goal for you, and that that trend continues. Yeah. How, how do you sort of 
get that maybe that pre-match talk or, or what's going on with the, the starting 11 and, and those first half woes to, to get on the board early and maybe not find yourself in those holes? Yeah, substitutes have been winning us the games. Uh, but I think it shows the strength and character of the group that we, that we do have 18, 19 that are all willing to contribute and to play hard. Uh, this, this, this league, or particularly when you play play down here in Florida is that, is that, that there is lots of goals in the last 20 minutes of games when teams get tired. It was, it was actually quite a cool evening tonight, but the game opens up, the game slows down, there's more opportunities, and I think that's why you see more goals in the last 20 minutes and probably in the first 20 minutes when physically both teams are at a same, the same level. Uh, that That has got to be our strength, is that we're used to playing down here and we do score late goals, and that means that if you're a substitute, uh, you have a great opportunity of impacting the game. And, and th those game changers that, that we call them, we don't call them substitutes, we call them game changers when they come on, have got to win us the game. Indiana's done it. Uh, and Gonzalo scored again today, uh, scored today to try and get us back in the game. And, and I suppose that the, the, the one positive to take from the game is that 2-0, uh, the team kept going, the team didn't quit. Uh, they, kept, they kept trying to get back into the game. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't.